My 2013 Dodge Challenger has been down for long enough. As you can see, it is now in the garage covered up. This is my absolute all time favorite car that I have wanted for the longest. Problem is it's been down for a while due to an input shaft, a problem with the input shaft on the transmission. As y'all can see, the transmission is sitting over there. But what I'm about to do is jack this thing up. I just fixed my jack. My jack was the reason why I haven't already started on this thing. But a few videos back, I fixed the input shaft on that transmission. But I now have to go up under it and get the old input shaft out so I can install this new input shaft that they sent along with the sleeve that I installed on that TR6060, man. So let me get this door open so we can get this thing up in the air. We're trying to get this thing up in the air as high as we can get it um, so that I can get up under here and put this transmission back in, man. So y'all just hold tight. Let me get the door open. We're going to get to work. While I'm headed out here, man, let me say this to y'all. God is everything. Without God, I'm nothing. All right, guys, so my camera is broken, so I'm using my phone, so I wasn't able to prop y'all up, but the front part of the car is up. So we got it up in the air. Now we just gotta go get the back up. And once I get the back up, we're gonna crawl up under there. We're gonna see if the, uh, the old input shaft bearing is in it. And then I got some bread in the house. There's a bread trick that a lot of have, a lot of people have used to get those input uh, input shaft bearings out. So I'm gonna try that first before I go buy a puller, man. But let me get the back up, and then I come back in. All right, guys. So quick update. Uh, there is my input shaft. Um, what is this kind of call? Uh, this is my pilot bearing right here. All the inner pieces, the whole inner piece, the inside part came out. So it's not even in there anymore. So I still got to try to figure out how to get this old, the outer bearing piece off of here. But the first thing I'm gonna do, because I got a brand new clutch that came with the new um, flex plate or flywheel, whatever this is called, where the starter jumps out to hit it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off to get this out of the way so I can get better access to this uh, pilot bearing. So this is where we at. I'm gonna show y'all this one. Y'all take a good look at this one. And I'm gonna show y'all what the uh, another OE one would look like. All right, so if you saw the other input shaft bearing up under there, you only saw this outer piece. This piece on the inside where all the little ball, the ball bearings on the inside, that whole thing just came out of there. And that's what caused my input shaft to fail because my input shaft goes through this. But I can't reuse this one because I put a sleeve on it. So I have to reuse this gold one in here, which is an aftermarket. Um, which is slightly bigger than that one. So I'm gonna get up on here and take this flywheel out, man. And um, we're gonna see how we're gonna approach this thing, man. So y'all just hold tight. All right, guys, check it back in. So here's what I seen on YouTube. I got a little bit of bread here. I do got some more in the house, but I figured these three, four little pieces should be enough. And they wrap some tape around a boat that's just big enough to fit in the hole. So like I said, I don't have my camera, so I can't show y'all exactly what I'm finna do. But I'm gonna stuff the bread in there, and then I'm gonna stick this, and I'm gonna take a hammer, and I'm gonna just beat it. And it's a, some kind of way it's supposed to push that uh, input shaft thing, the uh, pilot bearing out of there. Uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna work with mine with my, uh, the inside piece is missing, but I mean, at this point, I ain't got no choice but try it, so. We finna get up on here and try it, man. Like I said, I don't have my camera, so I can't show y'all, but um, I will keep y'all updated to if it works or not. So y'all just stay tuned. All right, guys, quick check in. I don't know what I did wrong, but I cannot get that uh, input shaft out of there with bread. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna either end up renting the tool or I'm gonna end up buying the tool to get that uh, input shaft out of there. But, I'm going to include everything into this video. This won't be multiple videos. Once I figure out what tool I need and rent the tool, we'll come back in and we'll finish everything up and we'll start putting this thing back together, man. Y'all stay tuned, man. It's coming back together. All right, guys. I don't know how loud that rain is, but there's a lot of raining going on outside of me right now. But I got something else that I'm going to try. I'm going to try to stuff grease into that pilot bearing and we're gonna see if that works. Uh, I didn't hear somebody say the bread has to be wet. So you do have to use wet bread, not, not dry bread, I guess. But I'm gonna try this grease. We're gonna try to put the grease in there. We're gonna find something else to rewrap and 
we're gonna try to see if we can get it out of there this time, man. Like I said, I don't have a tripod right now. My camera, I broke my lens, so if it works, I'll let y'all know. So y'all just hang tight. All right, guys, so unfortunately, once again, failed attempt. Just can't get right, man. So uh, tomorrow, I will be going to Harbor Freight to get their puller. Uh, they got a little thing that you can use and it's sticking at it. Uh, fork out like this and then i can use the snatch hammer and snatch it out so that's gonna be my next try um i'm assuming with all the grease on the stuff in there it, it should be pretty easy to come out but uh yeah man we'll be tuning back in once i get that man there's been a whole bunch of failures so y'all just hanging there with me we're gonna get this thing on the road i right, got so i'm back headed back out to the shop again i got this harbor freight um two pound slide hammer as y'all can see uh they got one that's made specifically for pulling uh pilot bearings but it was 65 dollars. i ain't gonna lie i was being cheap and i got this one for 30 so i'm gonna try this one for 30 if it don't work i'm gonna take it back and then i'm gonna get them whatever whatever the balance is and i guess that'll be it uh now that i'm looking at it i should have just bought the one for 65 because I didn't I didn't realize this one wasn't that good. But anyway, anyway, man, I'm finna get in here, get up on the hill, and I'm gonna try to uh, get this out so we can move forward, man. Y'all hold tight. All right, guys, leaving the shop, unfortunately. It didn't work. The threads messed up on the slide hammer, so it seems like I'm gonna be taking this back tomorrow and trying to get the one for $65. <sighs> but anyway guys we're gonna keep working on it um just figured i'd show it to y'all raw and how it really comes so we got to uh try some other stuff and uh yeah man wh whatever i get to figure it out to get it out i'll let y'all know man so y'all just stay tuned all right guys popping back in i finally got that stubborn pilot bearing out of here, man. Let me show y'all what we got. So this is what I had to do. Let me show y'all this, man. This could be useful for somebody. So this is that same little cheap tool from Harbor Freight. I was gonna take it back, but I was like, let me see if I can make it work. Now, I did mess it up in the process. Uh, the threads on the top are messed up, but here's what I did. I couldn't get this thing to thread and be tight enough. So if y'all can see, I broke a screwdriver. So I took it, well, I didn't break it on purpose, but I broke this screwdriver, so I took it and stuck it in between those two, um, I don't know what you call them, arms or whatever. That way it got tight enough behind the pilot bearing, if you can see where it gripped behind it. So I broke it, or I stuck the screwdriver in there to make it really grip behind that pilot bearing. Put me on a good pair of gloves with the, uh, what, what, what gloves, what are you at? Put on a pair of these Harbor Freight gloves with the little rubber on them. Cause my hand had gotten worn out man it was hurt so i got those gloves that gave me better grip and i just went to town on it no homo but i went to town on it and lo and behold it came out man so i'm gonna slide up on the head i'm gonna show y'all what it looks like and uh y'all just hold tight for me all right guys getting y'all up on the hill again and i got the new one installed so this is the brand new uh, pilot bearing, y'all can see the little um, needle bearings in there, and I cleaned it out real good with some some of that, and I got the new one pressed in. And let me show y'all what I use to press it in. So with the kit that I bought, um, it came with this, and you just sit this over here, and you just beat that bad boy in, man. So this tool was very well um, needed, and it got a little lip on it right there for you, so. It was good, man. Uh, that was it. And we finna move on to the next step, man. I got to figure out what order I need to put this thing back in here, man. Cause like I said, I did not take this out. So this is about to be a task, but uh, I'm gonna get it figured out, man. Uh, I'm pretty sure the flywheel gotta go back in first, the new flywheel. And I gotta figure out the torch spec for the bolts and lock tight and all that stuff like that, man. So y'all hold tight with me. I'm gonna get this stuff figured out and we're gonna at least get the flywheel bolted up and start getting the clutch back on here, man. So y'all hang tight with me. We're 
we're gonna get this car back on the road. All right, guys, checking back in. Took the clutch apart, as you can see. In a sack for a while. This is the clutch that I'm going with, but I'm gonna just try to sand this little surface rust off. Nothing crazy. I already kind of sanded it on the clutch a little bit. Um, nothing is like deep in it, so I think it'll be fine. Um, just sand it with a little bit of sandpaper. And once that clutch start riding on it, it'll clean it up. So sand it up with a little sandpaper on this side also, and the other side, and then, I'm gonna sand that up. And then we are gonna throw the flywheel back on first. I got the torque specs for it, but I don't have any red Loctite or blue Loctite. I don't know, I don't know which one I'm gonna use, but red or blue Loctite is what I'm gonna use to uh, put this thing back together. So once I get that Loctite, man, I'll be back. We are gonna at least put the clutch on and then that's why I shut this one down and then we'll start a new video, man. So y'all stay tuned. I gotta go get some red Loctite. Got the Loctite. Let me show y'all what we got. I went with the blue. I felt like the, the red wasn't necessary. Um, I got the torque specs for them. And uh, I'm, man, I'm gonna go ahead and torque these things down. We're gonna go ahead and throw the whole clutch in this thing. And um, that should be it. That should be it. Then I think the bell housing has to go back in. Then I think the transmission goes in. And then plug up all the plugs and stuff that's on this transmission. And all this and that, man. So, I'm going to get that done. And then I'm going to show it to y'all once we get it in, man. All right, man. So, I don't think I ever talked about the clutch that I'm going with. Um, I'm going with the McLeod RST. And you might ask, why do you need so much clutch? Real thing is, I don't. I don't need all this clutch. I just got it because I felt like maybe this will leave me some room to glow some room to grow uh, with it being a twin disc. Uh, it'll leave me some room to grow. And you know what I'm saying? If I decide to put nitrous or if I decide to go boost, I already know my clutch gonna be there. I know my transmission is the weak spot, but you know, I know that. So at, at least the clutch will be there. So, so let me go ahead and get this thing bolted up. And I gotta figure out a situation to get this old gas out of here. I don't know what, how, how it's a couple years old, about two years old worth of gas, man. I never, I gotta see how much is in it. So that, that'll be another task I gotta do, try to figure out how much gas is actually in there to determine if I wanna get it out or not. But anyway, let me get this clutch bolted up and I'll check back in with y'all once we get at least most of this clutch bolted up. All right guys, as you can see, the new clutch is in. Um, I know y'all still see that little rust on there. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I think first couple drives that'll be nice and nice and smooth again because you you can barely feel any of this stuff anyway. So um, yeah, man, this part is in, but we have to stop here. And once I get back up top, I'll show y'all why. All right, so if you guys can see this uh, new McLeod clutch, right? These two clutches have to be perfectly aligned in order for the transmission to go through it. There's a plastic tool or there's a tool that they sell that goes through here and holds these perfectly aligned while you uh, bolt everything up. For some reason, I don't know what my tool is. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if they can ship it. And this has been years ago, so I can't reach out to them and be like, hey, I didn't get this or that. And we're like, man, that's been two two plus years ago. All right, man, so we made a lot of progress in this video. This car is coming back together real soon. Y'all got my word on that. Y'all see I've been working hard. Y'all see I'm out here sweating now, trying to get it done. But for another video that I recently did with this El Camino right here, y'all look for some videos over here.